So very disappointed with today's announcement because not one single illegal gun will be taken off the streets by Mendocino's announcement today. And yet our country is facing serious public safety issues under his leadership and Justin Trudeau's leadership. Canada is facing a 32% increase of violent crime. 32% since Justin Trudeau became the prime minister. We are seeing 10 police officers were killed this year, eight of them on the job, notably many uh, from repeat violent offenders from the catch and release bail system that Justin Trudeau brought in a few years ago. We are seeing people being stabbed on public transit. Recently in Surrey, a man, an attempted murder happened. The man who did that, who stabbed that individual on public transit is back out on the streets eight days later on bail. Today's announcement will do nothing to keep Canadians safe in those regards, nothing to keep our police officers safe, and nothing to clean up the streets in Toronto where gangsters can get an illegal firearm under two hours because of the Liberal Prime Minister's porous border. So we're very disappointed that the state of Canada is seeing significant public safety issues with gangsters getting their hands on illegal firearms, smuggling them in from the United States. And today we're hearing tens of millions of dollars. Actually, he's being pretty cagey conveniently about how much it's going to cost. But we know tens of millions of dollars at minimum will be spent on this when our police are being starved of resources and criminals are running rampant on our streets. So very disappointing in that regard. And as you have heard, again, a 32% rise in violent crime. This will have no impact whatsoever on this. And this is just a step one of many steps of the Liberals and their confiscation regime that we know will cost billions of dollars and tar target law-abiding hunters, farmers, and sports shooters. So the Liberals are selling this, that they're, they've consulted and they're, they're coming back with new ideas. That is not true. They are bringing back the same definition that they pulled just a few weeks ago. That is what's happening here. They're talking about some sort of the, the list that they're not bringing back. That is also untrue. The list is encompassed in that definition. Let's just be very clear about that. So they're using weasel words. Nothing has changed. The attack on hunters is resuming in full force. This is round two that the Liberals are launching their largest attack on hunting rifles and hunters, farmers, and Indigenous Canadians in Canadian history. That's what we're seeing today. Le fait que l'association des gens qui s'occupent des armes et des munitions participe à ça, est-ce que ce n'est pas un exemple de bonne volonté du gouvernement d'inclure ceux qui font du tir sportif dans la situation? Do you mind if I respond in English? Is that okay? I just, I find it to be cruel irony that the Liberal government who has starved these mom and pop gun shops of resources with three successive gun bans now is throwing them a bone of taxpayer dollars to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. And it will do nothing for the illegal guns that are the real problem on the streets. So it's a lot of cruel irony there, but it's understandable. I don't believe that that support is made willingly. It is under duress. These, these gun shops are being starved of resources because of the Liberal government. So for them to say that they have willing support is not true. This is being made under duress. These folks have no other option. They're being put out of business because of the Liberal government. Have you seen the new definition? You just said you, you know what's in so the new what's definition. So what's very clear is that the Liberals and the NDP and the Bloc are working together. They're talking about the definition that's very popular with the anti-gun groups. And that's the one that they had that they recently pulled. So my understanding is they're bringing back that same definition once again, which again, even if there's no list written, they're being very, very clever about this. Those guns are encompassed in that definition. So there's no list that the public will be able to scrutinize, but those guns and thousands of other ones that hunters commonly use, that farmers commonly use, are going to be encompassed by the definition that they're bringing back. So I'll allow them to tell Canadians what the definition is, but my understanding is going to be very similar, if not the same, as the one that they just pulled. So again, round two of the same issue we faced just a few months ago. Isn't this Last a question. bit of a positive, I know you disagree with the policy, but is this not a bit of a positive step in that if these store owners are forced to simply have this inventory uh, put in cases and they can't make any money off of it, isn't that incumbent on the government to offer compensation, like offering compensation in this case seems better than forcing them to just have it sitting in cases that unable to sell that inventory. Again, this is being made, the support is being made under duress. They're not being given any other option. As you've outlined, they're being starved of revenue by successive bans in very short amount of time. This is the third one that they're working on in three years. What do you think that that does to a very small firearm shop? It's, 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 it's ending. 
there are shops closing across the country. So I understand why they're supportive of this to some degree, but it's being made under duress. And what's very frustrating is those firearms under lock and key in, in firearm shops, this is not impacting the gangsters in Toronto that are killing police officers and innocent Canadians. This is not impacting the real problem at all, and yet it's costing taxpayers tens of millions of dollars, not to mention uh, significant police resources. This is just step one of the confiscation regime. We know that Mendicino is working, looking to work with police to institute his confiscation regime of individual private property. That is going to drain further police resources from fighting violent crime. That's actually the cause of gun violence. And in fact, if you see Stats Canada, less than half of 1% of all violent crime, which has gone up 32%, less than one or half of 1% is committed with long guns. And the crime that is committed with firearms in this country, the vast majority of that is committed by criminals who aren't allowed to own firearms. They are prohibited from owning firearms. So anything that's going after uh, gun shops and law-abiding citizens who own private property lawfully that are trained, tested, and vetted by police is not going to have any impact on public safety. So Canadians who are looking to Justin Trudeau and Minister Mendicino to improve public safety and stop the murder of police officers and innocent Canadians on the buses, on the streets, today they will be significantly let down because it's just going to cost them a lot of money and do absolutely nothing to solve the problem. Do you think that Thank you very much. question about the about the uh, the la majorité des crimes qui sont commis au Canada, la majorité des armes saisies sont illégales. Puis je, je ne vois pas de stratégie du gouvernement par rapport à ça. C'est moi ma grande problématique. Puis c'est ce que les policiers me disent. J'étais encore avec eux la semaine passée. Puis ce qu'ils me disent, c'est euh, on fait quoi pour les armes illégales? Ça rentre par, euh, à peu près un peu partout au Canada. Puis euh, acheter une arme illégale à Montréal, ça vous prend 15 minutes dans la rue. Le fait que ce soit l'industrie, oui. les propriétaires de business d'armes à feu et de, de munitions qui seront responsables d'un petit peu de gérer ça, pensez-vous que ça va rendre... Le... Très difficile, à mon avis. Pourquoi? Bien, parce que je pense que je ne pense pas que les entreprises ont le registre de tous les armes à feu que les, les propriétaires privés ont. Il y a eu assez de changements de main en main. Comment ils vont faire pour retracer toutes ces armes-là? Merci. Non, mais je, je aussi si, 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 les, si les gens les ramènent dans ces... Si on utilise les informations que ces compagnies ont pour dresser une, euh, une, une liste, ou à tout le moins essayer d'avoir une idée de ce qui doit être rapporté, est-ce que ça, ce n'est pas une façon pour le gouvernement de démontrer Je ne sais pas, moi, est-ce que toutes les entreprises ont, ont à jour les, les armes à feu qui ont été échangées, qui ont été vendues, qui ont été données? Je ne suis pas certain. Pas certain. Je, com je comprends qu'ils peuvent avoir un risque à jour sur les, les dernières années, mais si on remonte à 8, 9, 10, 20, 30 ans, euh, moi je pense qu'il euh, y a un paquet d'armes qui sont pas. Euh, que les compagnies n'ont pas d'indication où ils sont rangés. Sur un autre sujet, le projet de loi C13, le, le gouvernement du Québec est en faveur avec la mouture actuelle. Est-ce que euh, vous allez euh, le soutenir? Moi, je vais avoir des discussions avec. Euh, vous savez qu'au Sénat, il y a beaucoup de sénateurs indépendants, francophones des, des provinces de l'Ouest ou des Maritimes. Donc, moi, je vais avoir des discussions avec eux. Euh, ma préoccupation, c'est surtout les, les, les francophones hors Québec. On sait que les Acadiens ne sont pas satisfaits du projet de loi. Euh, donc, moi, je vais m'en tenir beaucoup à leur opinion par rapport à ça. Parce que ce qui est important à ce projet de loi-là, c'est surtout euh, de protéger les lois des francophones en dehors du Québec, où on sait qu'il y a une problématique vraiment de... de de, de, de croissance de ces populations-là dans, dans la langue française. Euh, le taux d'assimilation est élevé. Donc, il faut que ce projet de loi-là protège euh, ces gens-là contre l'assimilation euh, des 10, 15, 20 prochaines. Excusez-moi, j'ai pris un rhume hier. Fait que, <rire> ça, ça dégoûte des fois. <rire> et c'est 11, bon, le, le débat s'est terminé ouais. très tard hier soir. Oui, il y a eu un uh, time allocation, oui. euh, le, un amendement, pas l'amendement, mais oui, euh, c'est-à-dire un. Euh, une motion de, de M. Gould pour euh, que le débat dure six heures, qui commence aujourd'hui. Êtes-vous déçu qu'on limite le débat? Moi, ben, je, je, écoutez, je, 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 je suis toujours déçu de, 
de, de, de, de limiter le temps <coughs> sur un procédé aussi essentiel que celui-là, aussi contesté que celui-là. Donc, c'est sûr qu'en limitant le débat, on, on, on s'attaque un petit peu à la démocratie, là, mais euh, c'est les règles du jeu. Euh, on, on le fait sur les conservateurs, les libéraux, je, dire, je pense, font, font le, même, le même type de, de, de motion. Fait que je pense que c'est... Euh, ça fait partie de la game, comme on dit. Dans la motion de réponse à, à la Chambre, il va être intégré quand même le fait que ben, le gouvernement s'est engagé à ce que, ça, ça, que le CRTC ne vienne pas contrôler euh, oui. ce que les utilisateurs de plateformes oui. euh, publient. Euh, il y aura d'autres amendements aussi. Amendement aussi. Mais, mais ça, ce n'est pas un, un amendement, mais c'est comme une mention dans, dans la motion qui sera envoyée à la Chambre. Est-ce que ça, c'est quand même un... un, un un gain en demi-teinte pour vous? Mon, mon expérience de 14 ans au comité des affaires juridiques, et surtout depuis que M. Trudeau est là, euh, lorsqu'on adopte un projet de loi des libéraux, on amène beaucoup de, 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 de remarques, de recommandations, et il n'y en a pas une qui a été suivie. Ça fait que je suis assez optimiste, assez pessimiste par rapport à, aux commentaires qu'on peut faire sur un projet de loi. Euh, les ministres n'ont pas tendance à les, à, les, à les reconnaître. Mais ça va quand même être « on the record. Ça va être ah, mais oui, le, oui, le, oui, mais les, ça, ça, les ça, ça demeure l'être euh, lettre morte, bien souvent. Merci. Hey, bonne semaine à vous. Merci. Merci.